Hello, good day. I am here to discuss with you how to solve problems involving two sets. Let us first recall the four regions in a Venn diagram. These regions represent the four subsets of the universal set formed when two sets intersect. R sub 1 is the set of elements in A that are not in B. R sub 2 is the set of elements that are both in A and B. R sub 3 is the set of elements in B that are not in A. Lastly, R sub 4 is the set of elements in the complement set of A union B. So now, let us try to solve a problem that involves two sets. In a group of 90 persons, 65 can speak English and 43 can speak Korean. If there are 10 persons who do not speak any of the two languages, how many can speak English only? How many can speak Korean only? And how many can speak both English and Korean. Since the problem involves two sets, let us represent the sets using two letters. Let's say E for the set of persons who can speak English and K for the set of persons who can speak Korean. This type of problem has two possible solutions. Let me discuss the first. In solving math problems, let us apply the GUESS method. GUESS stands for the acronym GIVEN, UNKNOWN, EQUATION, SOLUTION, and SELF-CHECK. First, we need to identify the given values in the problem. Next is to determine the unknown or what is being asked in the problem. Third, write an equation that will help you get the answers. Fourth, Carefully solve for your formulated equations. And lastly, don't forget to self-check. Review your answers. For our first solution, the given values are The cardinality of u is 90 since there are 90 persons in the problem. The cardinality of e is 65. The cardinality of k is 43. And the cardinality of the complement of E union K is 10, since according to the problem, there are 10 persons who do not speak English nor Korean. In our problem, we need to determine three unknowns. First, is the number of elements in E that are not in K. Second, the number of elements in K that are not in E. And last, the number of elements that are both E and K. Illustrating the given sets using a Venn diagram will give us a better picture of the problem. As you can see, R sub 1 represents the set of elements in E that are not in K. R sub 2 represents the set of elements that are both in E and K. R sub 3 represents the set of elements in K that are not in E. And R sub 4 represents the set of elements that are outside the union of E and K. Based on the problem, there are 10 persons who do not speak English nor Korean. Therefore, the value of R sub 4 is 10. As you can see, the rest of the three regions are the unknowns in the given problem. After identifying the given and the unknowns in our problem, let us now formulate our equations. It is known that the value of R sub 4 is 10, meaning we can now get the value or the number of elements in the union of E and K by subtracting the number of elements in R sub 4 from the number of elements in the universal set. After that, we can get the number of elements in R sub 1 
by subtracting the number of elements of K from the number of elements in the union of E and K. Next is for us to get the number of elements in R sub 3, and that is by subtracting the number of elements of E from the number of elements in the union of E and K. Lastly, we will get the number of values in R sub 2, which is the intersection of E and K, and that is by subtracting from the union of E and K the number of values or elements in R sub 1 and the number of elements in R sub 3. Now, we are going to solve our formulated equations, starting from equation number 1. Note that the value or the cardinality of the universal set is 90, since there are 90 persons in the problem, and the cardinality of R sub 4 is 10, which is given. Substituting the values into our equation, we have 90 minus 10, and the answer is 80, meaning there are 80 elements in the union of E and K. For our second equation, note that we already have the value for the cardinality of E union K, which is 80. And the cardinality of K is given in the problem, that is 43. Substituting the values into our equation, so the cardinality of R sub 1 is 80 minus 43, and the answer is 37, meaning there are 37 elements in E that are not in K. Now that we already have the number of elements in R sub 1, we are now going to solve for the number of elements in R sub 3. The values that we need are the cardinality of E union K, which is 80, and the cardinality of E, which is 65. Substituting the values into our equation, we have 80 minus 65, and the answer is 15, meaning there are 15 elements in K that are not in E. Lastly, we are going to solve for the number of elements in R sub 2. Again, R sub 2 is the intersection of set E and set K. So the values that we need are the number of elements in E union K, which is 80, the number of elements in R sub 1, which is 37, and the number of elements in R sub 3, which is 15. Substituting the values into our equation, we have 80 minus 37 minus 15. First, we subtract 80 and 37, and we get 43. Bring down minus 15. 43 minus 15 is 28, meaning the intersection of E and K has 28 elements. Now that we already completed the four values in the four regions, we are now going to self-check. Note that the cardinality of U is the sum of the elements in region 1, region 2, region 3, and region 4. Substituting the values in the equation, we have 37 plus 28 plus 15 plus 10. And the sum of the four values is 90. Recall that in the problem, the cardinality of U is 90 since there are 90 persons, meaning our answer is correct. Congratulations! So now, let us answer the three main questions in our problem. Number one, how many persons speak English only? So this set is represented by R sub 1. Therefore, there are 37 persons who speak English only. Number 2. How many persons speak Korean only? So this set is represented by R sub 3, meaning there are 15 persons who speak Korean only. Third, how many persons speak both languages? 
And this set is represented by R sub 2, meaning there are 28 persons who can speak both English and Korean. As I have said earlier, there are two possible solutions for this problem. Let me show you the second solution. Again, this will be our given and unknowns. This time, we are going to formulate a new set of equations since the second solution will follow a different process. The only similarity of the second solution from the first one is the first step which is we are going to determine the number of elements in the union of E and K. And again, that is by subtracting the number of elements of R sub 4 from the number of elements in the cardinality of U. The second step for this solution is for us to determine the intersection or the number of elements in R sub 2. And that is by adding the number of elements in E and the number of elements in K and then subtracting the number of elements of the union of E and K. Next is we are going to solve for the number of elements in R sub 1. And that is by subtracting the number of elements of R sub 2 from the number of elements in E. Lastly, we are going to solve for the number of elements in R sub 3 in a similar manner. And that is by subtracting the number of elements of R sub 2 from the number of elements in K. For our first equation, again, we are going to solve for the number of elements in the union of E and K. And that is by subtracting the number of elements in R sub 4 from the number of elements in the universal set. So that is 90 minus 10. And the answer is 80. After getting the number of elements in the union of E and K, so now we are going to determine the number of elements in the intersection of E and K and that is R sub 2. So the values that we need are the cardinality of E which is 65, the cardinality of K which is 43, and the cardinality of the union of E and K which is 80. So again our equation is get the sum of the number of elements in E plus the number of elements in K, and after that, subtract the number of elements in the union of E and K. So, substitute the values in our equation. We have 65 plus 43 minus 80. First, get the sum of the two values. So, we have 108 and bring down minus 80. 108 minus 80 is 28, meaning the intersection of E and K has 28 elements. Since we already have the number of elements in the intersection of E and K, we can now get the number of elements in R sub 1. And that is by subtracting the number of elements of R sub 2 from the total number of elements in set E. So the values that we need are the cardinality of E is 65 and the cardinality of R sub 2 is 28. Substituting the values, we have 65 minus 28 and the answer is 37. So there are 37 elements that are not in K. Lastly, we are going to solve for the number of elements in R sub 3. And that is the same as the previous one. By subtracting the number of elements of R sub 2 from the total number of elements in set K. So the values that we need are the cardinality of K is 43 and the cardinality of R sub 2 which is 28. Substituting the values into the equation, we have 43 minus 28 and the answer is 15. So, there are 15 elements in K that are not in E. 
As you can see, we obtained the same set of answers, which are 37 for R sub 1, 28 for R sub 2, 15 for R sub 3. Meaning, if we self-check our answers, we will still get 90, meaning our answers are correct. So now you have seen how to solve a problem involving two sets in two different ways. Notice that the first steps are the same, and that is to get the union of E and K. So the next steps are different. For solution 1, we obtained first the number of elements in R sub 1, followed by R sub 3, and last R sub 2. While in solution number 2, we obtained first the number of elements in R sub 2, followed by R sub 1, and last is R sub 3. So ma'am, which solution are we going to follow? My answer for that is, use the one which is easier for you. Because using either solution 1 or solution 2, you will still get the same answer. That's it. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Thank you and God bless.